The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Maddie Jance. We begin with your 17 Court Watch. A 30-year-old man has pleaded no contest to engaging in a sex act with a minor. Lawrence Morales entered the plea in Superior Court. In exchange, five other felony charges were dismissed. Police arrested Morales back in February after receiving a tip from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Prosecutors say he committed multiple sex crimes against a minor. Sentencing for Morales is set for next month where he faces 180 days in jail and must register as a sex offender for 10 years. Meantime, the trial continued for a young man accused of brutally murdering his girlfriend with an ice pick. We're now hearing testimony from his former cellmate. Daniel Gunnarsson was arrested a few years ago after deputies say they found him with the body of Catherine Pham in a garage in Ridgecrest. Yesterday, Gunnarsson's former cellmate testified that Gunnarsson told him Pham wanted to end the relationship and he lost control of his emotions. The former cellmate also said that Gunnarsson did not admit to killing Pham and only admitted to hitting her, quote, with a pick. Gunnarsson is facing charges of first degree murder and mutilation of a corpse. Trial is set to resume on Monday. Well, a local nonprofit is the latest victim of catalytic converter theft. Cap K says the converter, converters were stolen from underneath their food bank trucks. This is apparently the second time this has happened to their trucks in less than a month. Organizers say repairs could cost up to $20,000, which is the equivalent of more than 16,000 meals they could be providing to those in need. All right, now to news around the nation. A team of federal investigators is now in Maui searching for what started this blaze that has caused so much damage and heartache. That's just part of the federal response into the nation's deadliest fire in more than a century. NBC's Chris Pallone has more on Capitol Hill. Ahead of Monday's visit to Hawaii, President Biden offered a message of support for the victims of last week's wildfires. And I want the people of Hawaii to know your country's with you. The federal government and states across the mainland have scrambled to get resources to Maui. That's why we took immediate action, surging hundreds of federal personnel, delivering thousands of meals, liters of water, cots and blankets. More than 600 federal responders are on Maui, including 250 search and rescue team members, many using trained dogs to help find those lost in the fast-moving inferno. This is a really hard disaster, and this is a really difficult search operation. Maryland, among several other states, sending teams to help find and identify victims in Lahaina. There always is an eagerness, right? A lot of these people are firefighters already, so they come to work every day prepared to respond to the unknown. FEMA has spent nearly $4 million to help survivors find shelter on Maui. It's a place where frustration is growing and questions remain about state and local efforts to evacuate people as the fire bore down. Where were you guys to, to try and get us out, evacuate us? You no, know, we're mad. Maui's emergency management director has now resigned, citing health reasons after defending the decision not to sound the island's emergency sirens. Had we sounded the siren that night, we were afraid that people would have gone Malka. And if that was the case, then they would have gone into the fire. Several Hawaii lawmakers now calling for an independent investigation into the fire's cause and the decisions made leading up to this growing tragedy. The wildfires have now killed more than 100 people and destroyed thousands of buildings. Many have speculated that downed power lines from high winds were the cause. That's something the ATF team is looking at. In Washington, Chris Pallone, NBC News. Back here at home, thanks to your generosity, a local restaurant raised thousands of dollars to help the people in Maui. Maui Pho hosted a fundraiser earlier this week. The local restaurant is donating all profits from sales on Wednesday to the Maui Humane Society and the Maui United Way. Thanks to the overwhelming support from the community, owners say they'll be donating $28,000. And Meathead Movers, the athletics moving company, is calling on the community to donate essential supplies to Operation USA in an international disaster relief organization, which will be transporting the items to victims of the wildfires. They're collecting bottled water, non-perishable food, baby formula, and diapers. 
Donations are being accepted now through Sunday. All donated goods can be dropped off in the lobby of Meathead Movers on Unicorn Road. Turning now to an issue we cover extensively here at KGET, pedestrian safety. A teenage boy's in the hospital this morning after being hit by a car. It happened late yesterday afternoon on Brimhall Road in Northwest Bakersfield. Police say the 13 year old boy was walking in the crosswalk, but against a do not walk signal when he was hit. He was taken to the hospital where he's in critical condition. And we have some breaking news from overnight. A man is dead this morning after a crash in central Bakersfield. It happened last night around 1030. This is at the intersection of California Avenue and Chester. You can see the damage done to the passenger side of that car there. The passenger in that vehicle died. The driver is in the hospital with life threatening injuries. The driver of the pickup truck involved was not hurt. An investigation into how this crash happened is ongoing. The California Highway Patrol is conducting a DUI driver's license checkpoint tonight. The checkpoint will take place from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. in an unincorporated area of Kern County. Officers will check for signs of alcohol or drug use, as well as making sure that drivers have valid licenses. Recent statistics show that 30% of drivers in deadly crashes had one or more drugs in their system. Checkpoints are placed in locations based on crash statistics and frequency of DUI arrests. 17 Health Watch this morning, doctors across the country sounding the alarm about mental health crisis among our youth. Emergency departments are seeing an influx of young patients because some have nowhere else to go for help. 17's Jenny Ha looks at the situation here in Kern County. The youth mental health crisis is bringing a surge in patients to emergency departments nationwide, including those in Kern County. The mental health need has increased faster than the resources, the infrastructure, and what we have here in our community to respond to it. Kern County itself, though, is an underserved area. This is a challenging area to recruit professionals, mental health professionals. Kuahara said the number of youth seeking emergency support for mental health conditions in Kern County has jumped from a little over 1,100 to over 1,900 in a span of five years. From 2022 to so far this year, there have been more than 1,350 youth contacts. We actually saw increase in the volume in youth mental health before the pandemic. The pandemic uh, further exacerbated that. Kern County has a crisis center known as the Mary Kay Shell Mental Health Center. Kuahara said it's very limited with only four inpatient facility beds, but she noted the county received a $17 million grant it will use for opening up a new 16 bed inpatient facility in early 2024. She also pushed for more preventative measures before or things get out of hand. This mother of two agrees. I'm checking in with them every day, every morning. How are they doing after school? What's going on? I let them know that, hey, this is something you can you can fall apart at home. That was Jenny Ha reporting. Fast moving wildfires threatening a town east of San Diego. Crews are fighting the Coyote Fire. It started yesterday afternoon. Firefighters say it has burned more than 400 acres, including some buildings. It's only about 5% contained right now. An evacuation order is in place and an excessive heat warning was in effect for the deserts until 8 o'clock last night. Yeah, really rough on our firefighters when they have to fight these blazes in such excruciating heat. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.